Hey, welcome to another typology interview. We have Bradley Rogers. How's it going, Bradley? Oh, I'm good. How are you? Doing good, man. Um, so I actually did an interview with you before when you were just um, typed based on a call with Dave and Chen. And then now you were officially right, typed. Yeah. yeah. And so, but the video I had, um, I don't know, because you weren't sure about your type. You weren't like, you weren't really um, agreeing with it yet. Um, so I sort of, I left it, I think I left it in the interview um, in the playlist, but I didn't actually publish it. Um, so people can go check it out if okay. they want. Yeah. Um, but this one I'm going to publish because now you're a little bit more confident with your type or you're at least able to, to see it better. Yeah, I can see pretty much everything. Some of the coins are easy to see than other coins, but uh, it makes right. a lot more sense than it did before. Right. So I remember last time you were having trouble with the idea that you weren't an NT because like you, you feel NT, that's part of your identity and you come off as NT, I guess. And then, yeah. so have, you're SF actually, right? I'm SF, yeah. But I'm double feminine in SF, so. Oh, okay, the, so the, the NT is double masculine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's really similar to Thomas Ayalot. He's also double feminine SF. Right. But, but he comes off as NT in a way. That's interesting. Mm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that basically sums it up. Like, uh, I'm, uh, I'm SF, but only in a very limited way. Uh, because it's a uh, consume SF, so it's um, more introverted than like a player of blast. Right. And uh, also, it's like um, super. I, I experience my SF pretty passively. Right. So, and because it's uh, both feminine, I don't really. They say um, you stand and fight on your masculine functions, and the, right. the feminine ones are movable. So, um, uh -huh. it's something where it's like I, I consume and then. Because I'm also blast blast, there's and play low. There's like a lot of inactivity there, inactivity there, and a lot of like um, consuming and and processing, and not really doing anything with it. Right. And then um, even if I do want to do something with it, it's like the um, I don't really want to quote fight on my SF because um, I see the facts and the values as could change at any moment. Right. I, what I want to know though is, do you see like um, being a nerd as something cool? Do you see it as something that could be SF popular? Um, I mean, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> That's it. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's cool, but the, the whole popular nerd is like, uh, I mean, it's definitely a thing. Like, there are definitely yeah. some entities that are like, pretty popular. Right. And that can, like, can, can pull off, like, the not only, like, the... um making entry relatable but like also like the whole fashion sense and like present the physical presentation of like the sf they can do it all so right i mean it, it it can be done but um i don't think it will be as popular as sf will be like ever so yeah no but i was just um, i was just wondering if like because it's a stereotype it's an anecdote that like sf is about popularity but like i was mm -hmm. wondering if maybe like that's where the the nerdiness comes from that you your, I guess, I don't know, from the SF and not from yeah. the NT? Uh, I mean, it's hard to say because, um, you know, in like the traditional like Myers-Briggs sense, um, it was uh, basically everyone thinks I'm an NT and like MBTI land. So even like when I first took the test, I came out INFP. So I thought I was like on the lead FI and um, FIT access for a while. But right. it's everyone else was like, I don't think you're a feeler. <laughs> And I was like, right. I'm pretty sure, yeah. And it was like, no, you're a thinker. And this is like from this, this is the whole spectrum of like the people who like don't really know the stuff about MBTI to the stuff that the people actually know what the functions are. Right. And how like feeling and thinking presents. So it's just like, yeah, we're pretty sure you're a thinker. So um, I actually but, thought it was a, a good year. Yeah, but you should be relatively balanced on thinking and feeling. Because if I remember, you're like an ESFP, right? That's sort of, okay. Yeah, SDFI. So like the thinking uh, and the feeling could be up in the air. Like maybe you're thinking, maybe you're feeling because you're using both, I guess. Um, yeah. I like it's more um, masculine too. Yeah. So my, my FI gets squashed really easily by thinking. Right. And uh, e even though like um, I play and blast with both load, the tri-validation part of thinking is pretty bad, but thinking right. in a vacuum is decent, I think. Okay. 
So, okay, so let's talk about your functions a bit. Um, SE, are you aware of it? Do you, do you see it in your life? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, it's largely passive. Like, um, I know SE is stereotypically active and in your face. Right. But um, that's only, I only experience that sometimes. Most of the time it's just um, respect. I have a respect for the sensory. I don't right. necessarily like want to hit it or um, I, I'm not very kinesthetic. In, in any sense, but um, if there is like any, everything sort of like falls under like, is it factually accurate? Like, is it right. actually, did it actually happen? So like, if I have um, like reasons or values or even like concepts, it's like, um, if, you, if once the facts keep coming in, I always have to like reestablish, um, uh -huh. based on every fact that comes in, I have to reestablish all the other concepts and things. And are, are, do you feel like it's feminine? Do you feel like all these facts and, and um, sensory yeah. <laughs> data, do you think that it's just, it's here one moment, gone the next? Pretty much. Once I have the concepts, I chuck the sensory. You chuck it, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it's like I can sometimes remember the sensory if I have, um, I'm visual. So if I have like yeah. a visual, I can sort of like um, recollect the sensory based on the visual that I have. Right. But um, it won't be the same. Actually, yeah. Yeah. And, and to remember the sensory, you have to like collect it over and over and over. So I have to like gather the same sensory over and over again. Then I can remember it, the actual right. sensory. Interesting. Otherwise, it's just a conceptual recollection okay. of the sensory. And, and do you feel like it takes you maybe a longer time than others to actually get that intuitive pattern down? Um, yes and no. Sometimes I'll have the, um, sometimes I'll get the pattern immediately, but uh, uh, the sensory will come in and I have to like reconsider it even though. Right. Like the, the concept was working before, but because I'm not responsible for the concept, um, I always have to take in the facts. Um, well, facts that interest me because um, my play is low. So it's not, it's not like um, SC is something I can never turn off. Right. I can go into like consume sleep mode, like um, if I feel like I have enough facts. But if there's a fact that feels like it's um, relevant to the consume sleep, then I have to um, I have to consider the fact and its relevance pretty much every time. Would you, would you say that like your initial guess, your initial intuitive guess, is off most of the time? It's on, or you just have no way of verifying, and you need to confirm, confirm, confirm until you get it. Um. I mean, it depends on the day. Some days if I'm, it, it depends on like what's writing on the guess as well. Because I can guess like really easily, but um, when other people- You wouldn't are put your money board, on it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't, more importantly, I wouldn't put other people's money on it. So right. if other people want me to guess, it's like, yeah, I can't do that. Like if I can take the sole um, punishment, the, the sole consequence for the guess being bad, then yeah, I'll take it. But if people are like coming to me for like um, information, it's like, I have to like double and triple check to make sure I'm not giving right. them like bad information. Right, okay. And then that's responsible for the consume and responsible for sleep too. Yeah, exactly. Right, and so is, is your blast last or third? Uh, last, play third, blast Okay, last. play third, okay. You're not doing too bad on blast, man. Yeah, only, only because I've done so much consume sleep on it and right. um, I'm also in the last last um, Facebook group, so I, I'm trying to, to practice. Uh, exactly, and I'm trying to filter out the um, the information that's not as important, like the the whole um, consume sleep idealism. If people have it, like if not top two, then top three. If they have consume and sleep top three, it's like you want to give them all of the consume sleep all the time. And yeah. um, part of blasting is being able to like um, you know narrow it down and eliminate some of the more irrelevant stuff. Right. So I'm getting better at doing that. So because because your blast is last, that makes your consume automatically double activated. Yeah. And it's savior. And the savior, yeah. So how much do you actually consume? Um and what kind of things do you consume? Uh, the short answer to that is whenever I can. And uh the more long answer to that is it I mean I like to consume like music and books. Okay. Pretty much exclusively. What kind and, of books? Uh, 
Um, well, I, I mean, I say books like generically. Sometimes it's not just books, but it's always, um, I always like to consume words. So like it could be like internet articles, it could be um, mm. like uh, I'm, I'm sort of like, I've been into um, typology for like a good two, two years. So right. I'm reading a lot of like um, Enneagram books and uh, reading a lot about like um, some of Dianardi's research. Um, I can't remember the details about it anymore because it's been a while since I've like read it, but I read his, some of his research. I've read um, right. some Enneagram books. I've read um, some of the David, David, M., no, David Kizzy. Yeah. I saw you in Ben Vasserlin's, um hangouts a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I was in some of his, um, I guess. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in, I moved into some of the Kizzy stuff and some of the Enneagram stuff. Cool. And I'm on his channel talking about those a lot. Cool. And then um, I also, I consume, when I'm around people, I can consume people really easily because um, I don't have to blast <laughs> if I just like um, oh, ask like them. Listen to what they're saying and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Be, be sort I, of like I, a fly on the wall sort of thing. Basically. Like there'll be some element of play, but um, the idea is to like get them to loosen up so I can just like consume their blast right. and then just like, not blast at all. Right. Um, yeah. So. That's pretty much. There's also like a bunch of, I'm somewhat of a music nerd, like a classical music nerd. I have like a whole bunch of like um, scores, just um, like pages and pages of just like music sheets, like saved on my laptop. They kind of like just go through every now and then. Right. And you, and you like this stuff? Like, are you aware of what you like and dislike? Um, yeah. But um, the thing about that is like, um, I, I might be aware of what I like, but um, I don't really... St- um, I, I don't really I mean it's feminist so the best way I can say is like I don't really stand on it so yeah. it's like I know what they value but I don't value the values themselves because so, it's feminine um, as well okay yeah but are you aware so, of like the priority of like this guy this is better than this like is this something that you're always trying to sort out what's better yeah but it's also like um, it's, it's all extremely relative like I might like exactly, this yeah, it's relative. Up. Love it, yeah. So it's right. like how, like, more important, less important than some other things, like um, right. And it can it move on right any given now? day. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. And you invest a lot of time in sort of deciding what's better, what's not, and revisiting it. Um, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm very much OE or SC in a sense that um, everything my likes are like always about right now. Mm-hmm. So if I, I like something, but it's not readily applic- applicable right now. Then um, I generally, I generally like shove it off. And um, if there's something right now that's uh, more relevant, then I generally just do that instead. Right. And if you, if you, um, are you aware of your values as well? Like, are you aware of the hierarchy of values? What's more important in life? What's, what's a, a, a better goal than another goal? Means and ends, things like this um the the means and ends is the where i have the problem it's probably like the demon t or the demon nt is to where oh, um, i guess also the 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 non the inability to double observe might be there too means and ends yeah right yeah absolutely so um it's like i have like some vague like i have the i have the goal in mind but like the path leading up to the goal is like the missing information mm. So it's just like I have a goal and it's like I have no idea like how to get I think there. everyone has that missing information to some extent. You never know. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, the thing about this is like, you know that people are different, but you don't know like how different they are. So like, um, it could be everyone experiences it a lot or some people like don't have that problem at all. Right. Or yes, yeah, it depends. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Um, what about your, your masculine TE? Is that something that you're aware that it's TE, that it's associated with tribe, that it's um, um, seeing a spectrum of thoughts and not just a single logical chain? That's, yeah, I mean, the thing about that is that um, it should be more tribe focused, but because I blast and play low, it's often not. So right. it can look like TI because it's not being, there's no ping back off the tribe. So even though like the source is generally the tribe, I can just consume sleep and like make it my own. Okay. And like, even though it's like tribe has a tribe root, it, has, it always has like a root in the, in the tribe reason, but um, 
if I don't constantly ping off the tribe, I just sort of like take it off into like my own sleep cycle. Right. And then just do you feel like it's, do you feel like it's really, I guess this also ties into SE a little bit, but do you feel like your T is also really responsible to be objective and unbiased and uninfluenced by your own value, I guess, and, or un- and influenced by your own perceptions and understandings? Um, I mean, that's the goal, yeah. Th- that, that's generally the goal. But like the closer something is to my FA identity, the more it's harder to remain objective. Right. So it, it might be really easy and then really hard like the next day. Do you see yourself uh, double deciding every so often? Is that something that happens? Um, yeah, but I mean, it's, that's like a very, there's like a, the double deciding for me is like very extreme as to where sometimes it's like 50, 50, like tribe me, tribe me. Right. Other times it's like the, the tribe is here and I'm over here and it's like irreconcilable. I just have to like pick a side and like go with it. Pick a side. Okay. And yeah. do, you, do you see the shades of gray between self and tribe a lot too? Or do you see them as two extremes that you have to pick one or the other? Yeah. I mean, it depends on the issue. Like the issues, um, I feel strongly about um, it's always like a me or them, mm-hmm. but because um, because my values are um, movable and it's like um, not really firm, sometimes they will go with the tribe and not really understand that it goes against my value until like after the fact. So um, sometimes it's not always. I, I always like est- underestimate the impact of my own values. Right, of tribe so, values, I guess, yeah. But that's FE, so you shouldn't really care about that as much. Um, or feel responsible not, not for it. Much. Yeah, yeah. Um, not as much, but um, I, oh, I definitely see the tribe's decisions as non-movable. So, like, yeah, um, like tribe logic and, and tribe reasons, maybe. Yeah. So, like, the, the tribe reasons are, like, more immovable than, like, my own values, my own reasons. Or basically, assuming that I have all four functions, the... The masculine T is like the most solid of all four of them. Right. Um, what do you what do you see as uh, as, as truth? Something that works, or something, or it's, it doesn't matter if it works or not. It, it's true. It could be true even if it doesn't. Um, work. Yeah, I mean, it could be true even if it doesn't work. But if it works and it's more relevant, is how I look at it. Okay. So yeah. it's like I know it's not true, but it's working. So let's just keep it keep it working and then of course when, when it breaks down it's because it's not true <laughs> but um I, I definitely have a hard time that's interesting that ties a little bit more into ti um yeah because and then you were also talking about uh t- tribe values are you aware of tribe values um yes I'm, I'm definitely aware of them, but I, I don't put them over my own values like any time, I think. I don't know. It, it's for me, like the deciding is really hard because... Um, what well, about see, your own see, reasons? Do you, do you have your own reasons for things? For doing everything? Um, yeah. Like, I mean, I always have my own reasons, but I'm always comparing my... Re- basically... <laughs> not, not the whole um, thing about like if I'm like FE, um, TI or TFI is that um, where's, where does my validation come from? And um, I always feel validated or invalidated based on my reasoning. So, so um, yeah, I've, I've got the same thing as a TI, man. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, well, well in that case, like, it could be TI then, who knows? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um, definitely um, the, the, the FI or TI like... Um, it's come to the point where even Dave and Shen said that I could, um, I could be TI. The only reason they said that I was FI is that um, I'm aware of what I value. And the whole thing was that, like, they said that, this, this is me just telling me, you what they said is that TIs generally aren't aware of what they value. Or, or do, they you have, do you have maybe, that. like, a sensory example of a time where you had to double decide? And you could just change the situation and, and make it something different, just as like as an example. But yeah, I, I mean, the, the thing that's hard about that is that like in the moment, um, I, it's generally the tribe first. Like all, all the double deciding I do is like during consume sleep. So it's like I go with like a tribe decision in the moment, and then like retrospectively, I look back on what happened. And it's like okay, so this is what he did and what um, he's thinking. This is what. I'm thinking, feeling, whatever. Okay, yeah. But so can you take us through that process, like an example of that? 
Um, sorry, I, I might need a few minutes like retrieve a memory. Yeah. Um, Hmm. All right, it's taking too long. <laughs> okay, can you can you like give me like an example of like some sort of like issue or like um some like uh, yeah to concept? trigger your memory? Sure. Yeah. Um. So let's say you were in a conflict with um a group decision in some way, or you were in a conflict with something that people wanted to do or wanted to think or wanted to wanted to decide on something or you were feeling pressured or pressured to follow the group or you were pressuring others. Oh, okay. Um, I, I sort of have an example that's sort of like related to that about like, um, uh, like it involves another tribe member and like the status in the tribe. Okay. So basically I had, like, I had a coworker that like made a mistake. And instead of owning up to it, they tried to cover it up. Right. And um, we didn't find out that they covered it up until like a week later. And um, it was like... It's damage. Exactly. Uh -huh. So, um, so like one of, one of the people like on the side of like, obviously, you know, like he should have been more forward. Like he, he was, basically everyone was asked like, you know, who made this mistake? And everyone said no, including the guy who actually did it. So... Right. Um, when I actually came out that, you know, no one else had, um, basically it was, it was a shipping mistake. So he shipped something somewhere it wasn't supposed to go. And, um, when we heard from the customer that, um, they got a part that they didn't order. And we heard from another customer that they're missing the part that, um, got shipped right. to someone else. Um, everyone's just like, okay, what happened? And basically process of elimination, none of us, um, None of, none of us shipped it, and we noticed that the guy who did it like wasn't around on the day where the um, the manifest said it was shipped. So you know, process of elimination, he did it. So it was never never really came out, and he was never really confronted directly. But you know, there's a bunch of like him talking behind his back about like you know um, what you know um, what exactly happened, and there's a lot of like blaming him. Um, and I was like sort of like on both sides, like, well, you know, what he did was like really bad and he should have like um, said something or he should have owned up to it like immediately and not try to like cover it up and hide it for a week. Right. And then another part of me was like, um, well, if it was me, I might have done that. But if I was to be confronted um, with it, I wouldn't have owned up to it. I probably wouldn't have hit it. So it's like sort of like reconciling like his decision with like other people's decisions about his decision. Right. And it's like, so, um, I can see both sides of that. And I, I find it very difficult to like take a stand on like who did it. So right. what I, what I noticed just there, and I could be wrong. I mean, I'm just, I'm just a, a noob at this, like everyone else. But, um, what I noticed right there is you were talking about uh, tribe values mm -hmm. and then you were talking about, I could have done it and you were considering your reasons. I, your own personal reasons for doing it. Okay, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely accept that. Like, um, I don't know. Uh, if, I, you don't have to accept it. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, this is so. Maybe just take it under consideration. And it's interesting that Dave and Shannon weren't sure about it either. So, yeah, like, um, I'm definitely. Um, I mean, but by, by accepting it, I mean, like, I can. I'm definitely. I can accept that. Um, I could be a different type. Right. But, um, it's definitely like if it's not. Savior TI and it's Savior FI and it's like those are the two things and then there's like a whole different project of like um, pushing the tribe too right and like um, family so, masking identity and it's like yeah interesting um, so let's let's go into maybe like your your masculine or feminine feminine feelings um, sure do you do, are you very sensitive are you a sensitive person um, That's a, I mean, it's a hard question. Um, um, generally, um, when you say sensitive, do you mean like, am I offended easily or do, am yeah, I, do, do I get, you take things to heart easily? Yeah. Um, no, no. Do are you, do you sometimes laugh uncontrollably uncontrollably or is like that an often your response to laughter or. 
Um, I, I mean, I guess, you know, uh, that would be like a case of something that I, right? Right. So, um, I, I mean, compared to, this is my own like biased and like, um, bias experience but compared yeah. to like other I, I can definitely see like the whole um, feminine fi like can't laugh uncontrollably mm-hmm. and i don't think i do that um but that's just me like self-reporting so i don't think i'm doing it like as much as some of the other people i see who are doing it um right. so but, yeah that's interesting um, that you're, you're you still feel obligated to the objectivity you still feel object and you're talking about a spectrum i'm comparing myself to other people right sure yeah so that that that's I, I can see the SE there, mm-hmm. or any, but yeah, that it's your lead function is OE. OE, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, it's definitely um, respect for all the information, and, and not um, not so much um, just picking one and being like that. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time doing that. Yeah. So, but so you were talking about the spectrum of people and how you're less you're less feminine than them on your feelings. Um, yeah, in a, in, in like a, a laughing sense, I, I haven't really, what um, about an, an, what about anger and rage? Are those like more of your go-to emotions than, um, sadness and crying? No, nah, um, definitely sadness, sadness and, um, resentment are probably like in, in place of anger and rage. Mm-hmm. I, I can feel pretty resentful sometimes, but I, I never really voice it outwards. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, what, what, you're feminine feeling, right? So it's supposed to be, I mean, anger and rage is supposed to be like masculine feeling. So, so I, I do get, I do get anger and rage. I mean, like okay. everybody. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's not easy controlling it. And yeah. Especially right, well, with demon also, feelings. Yeah. Yeah. And you have masculine sensory too. So. <laughs> right. That, that, that might have um, some. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I'm definitely, uh, I don't get angry often. Well, maybe you don't have reason to often because, you know, I don't get angry often either, but. Yeah. I mean, I mean people tell me I should be angry, okay. <laughs> but I'm like, yeah. uh, I don't really feel like you should That's be. That's true. So. They say the same thing to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's definitely you, something can stick us to that. What about, BTI. maybe like you do get angry, but you hold it in and you don't show it. Is that something that happens? Like you suppress um, it and suppress it? Yeah. I mean, suppressing is generally what I do, yeah. Because right. I, I, I definitely feel like my feelings are movable and that um, I won't feel that way like in a few minutes of time. So that's, that's also I, I FE. That's more FE too. Because FE is more feelings in the moment, feelings in the. Because, hmm. like, if something yeah. happens, if something happens, um, and you should you you should always feel the same about it all the time if you're fi right like or once you develop your not maybe feelings but more like your your values it's it's your values should be more um consistent over time and non even though it's feminine they should be more universal uh well uh, okay there's also the part that um sometimes i process my feelings like in sleep so um i I don't really do it in the moment Mm-hmm. But sometimes I can like think back on what happened and then get the feeling after. So yeah. I don't know if that's like just. Yeah, I don't know either because I would, I could also, I, I don't know if I could process my feelings in sleep, but I could, I could allow them to go out if I, like, it's something that I'm starting to work on is to allow my emotional energy to be released. And I'll try to do that during certain times, I guess. That yeah. it's like, but for yeah. Me, yeah. But for me, when I'm sleeping, like, um, Sometimes I like I try to be rational, but sometimes like the emotions are seeping out. Yeah, and um, that's when it's like, okay, I don't know why I'm feeling this emotion. So. Yeah, you could be you could be TIFE. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, maybe. So, what about that demon intuition? How does that come out? Um, masculine. Yeah, masculine. So, I mean, it's. I definitely see how it's masculine because even though I don't, I'm not really responsible for intuition, I definitely sometimes see the plan as or the concepts that uh, are movable. So, so you'll get stuck uh, on them. You'll get stuck yeah, on exactly. them. You can't change them. Yeah. They're solid and yeah. Yeah. So like sometimes even though I'm responsible for facts, 
sometimes the facts just like bounce off the concept if it's like in set in stone, just like ping ping. Right. So, uh, and so adjusting and changing a wrong concept is going to be something that's very difficult for you. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the more um, the, the more facts the are to support the concept, the harder it is to change. Right. So e even though my um, even though my my FI attachment or DI attachment might even not even be in the concept anymore. Right. It's just even though I'm no longer interested in it, the concept is still there, and I have to respect it. I see. So, but I I don't really. So what about like contradicting facts between and they could point to one of two concepts. What would you do in that sort of situation? Um, I don't. I, I don't. I don't really have difficulty like reconciling different concepts. It's just which, which concept does the fact belong to? So but like um, okay. So like let's say let's say one person is is telling you one thing, okay, and then mm -hmm. you observed something different. Yeah. Um, how much are you? And, and you're aware that it could be your own bias, your, this observation, let's say. Okay, so I, I could be wrong because it's my observation. I might not have observed it right. And his observation and his perception could be correct, right? So, and, and they're both pointing to two different concepts. So let's say he's, he stole an object or he didn't steal the object, right? Hmm. He paid for it. He says he paid for it. You just never saw it. Oh, okay. Something yeah, like in, that. in that case, yeah, in that case, that's where the, um, excuse me, that's where the feminist century is like, okay, I, I, feel, I thought I saw one thing, but did I actually see it? Mm -hmm. That's where, um, like, the recollection, the that's there. where, okay. yeah, exactly. And then, and then so, so the, the question is, maybe, like, would you let him in your house and un, not observe him in your house, or, or, like, would you be wary of oh. him being a thief sort of thing? Yeah, I'd definitely be wary of it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I'd like be I'd probably be open to the possibility that like um, I'm misremembering it, but right. I definitely wouldn't like let him off the hook, or or right. um, I definitely have that in my mind all the time. Is like I should keep an eye on him. Okay, and so then how long would that concept like stay around? That he's like, if he's if enough facts pile up that he's not a thief, will you still always keep that concept? Will it still be something that's hard to forget? Yeah, exactly. Like um, it won't always be there whenever I see him. But if he does something to like trigger the concept, it'll like pop up immediately and it's like all mm -hmm. I can think about. Interesting. So like then, then that would also mean maybe like in a, a relationship or something, if your partner was like, was it's, it's hard to forget some past transgressions or something or that's different? Yeah. 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 It, um, it's definitely hard to forget those. Um, and it's not, it's not always in the moment. Sometimes it is like when I'm sleeping on it and it's like I'm thinking about the times, like, oh wait, this reminds me of the time where he did that, which means that the pattern should be the same. Right. So maybe like watch out for that. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you, do you have any message for the tribe about your type? Um, like, or anything to promote or? Um, n nothing to promote. I will say that for, um, there, there are still like lots of people still can't really see me as FI. And right. um, basically, everyone before the typing was like, sure, I'd be come up TI. Okay. Um, so, I mean, my message is that um, my message, my message, I'm trying to think of a nice way to say that, but my message is that um, there's no way of verifying someone's correct type. So, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, the whole like um, David Shan both got the same result both right. times. They, unofficially and the type of they both with the same result. Um, so that's, um, that's at least precise, but it might not be accurate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I know everyone like wants the type to be like their type and um, set in stone and like only one possibility out of five, 12 and only that one. And that might be true in theory, but in practice, um, there's no guarantee that there aren't more than five, 12 types, you know, it could be like some subset of that five, 12 and, it could be much of like overlap where um, you could be in between two types, like um, because everything's so arbitrary and um, the whole like what you do 51% of the time is um, very close to the 49. So you could be like a very clear type, but you could be like somewhere in between. 
So uh, just be cognizant of that when it comes to like considering your own type or other people's type. It's like perfectly normal to be unsure of some things because there's no one way to be 100% sure. It's just like people's best guess in your own experiences. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if that makes any sense. The only certainty is to be uncertain. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That sounds like an observer thing to say, but right. that's what I believe. <laughs> cool, man. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks a lot for coming. Take it easy. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah.